A water skiing baby, how could anyone believe that he'd grow up to be the guy we all know as PB? How you doing? That's a solid <laughs> intro. That's right there. Starting from day one, baby. Literally. <laughs> I loved it. Uh, I didn't know what that was going to be. That was great. And well, don't you remember the song in Incomplete, too? Yeah. The- yeah. <laughs> How's your, your memory on old wakeboard films is immaculate. Oh, like, I appreciate you could, that. You Ruck can really pick out any song that's ever been in a wakeboard video and tell you who wrote to it and probably what trick's going down on uh, and what part of the song. I mean, it Impressive. really. Impressive. It really shaped my life. I mean, <laughs> the, the whole, you know, fall line, uh, sideways, all those, you know. That's all we had back then. Yep. You know, we didn't have the, the swipe up and Instagram. We just wore those VHS tape out. Boy. Wore some VHS <laughs> out. I mean, seriously did. Seriously did. PB, great to have you. Yeah. A lot of a lot of these interviews, we've been like starting from the beginning and telling, telling stories and all that. But um, I kind of wanted to go a little different direction with you. And um, obviously, you know. From your entire life has been on the water and pretty much changing the game of water skiing, and then obviously when wakeboarding, when that really became a thing, obviously you were at the forefront of leading, you know, progression on the water as well as product, and I mean, you know, boat driving like different style double ups, and then with Red Bull like all the different contests of just really you know bringing to bringing wakeboarding to the forefront of what it can truly be. I wanted to start off by by kind of talking about what you've done, you know, in the last five years of kind of like, you know, post, you know, competitive wakeboarding and yeah. that, that style thing. But I feel like the coolest part of what you've done in the last five years is just constantly reinventing yourself with, I mean, you've done some huge things, the, the, you know, all your Red Bull stuff, um, all the barefooting edits and... Uh, you know, barefooting behind the F1 car. I mean, that was huge. I mean, just a game changer. Like, the way you've been able to reinvent yourself as someone that is just a, a waterman having fun constantly, I think is just genius. And obviously, it's not like you've come up with this character. It's just you. Yeah, I think that's the, the important part about it. I mean, from a, like you said, from a, a young age, all I've wanted to do is get better at water skiing, get better at barefooting learned the trick that I haven't learned yet. And then when I got into wakeboarding, wakeboarding was, fortunately, you know, I got into it at the young age when wakeboarding was really young. So in the beginning, you kind of remember what it was like. It was like all about inventing tricks. There's so much um, frontier of wakeboard tricks that haven't been done. So my whole progression of life, just wanting to learn the next best thing was kind of like that into wakeboarding. And that went into contest writing, you know, and then into rails and stuff, and then into video section. So I've always been trying to, um, do what I haven't done um, previously and at the same time keep it fun and if you stay too true to yourself and like the, I, genuinely that's what I just love to do is just if I'm not having fun on the water I'm going to try to figure out I'm going to do something different and I'm going to try to figure out a way to have fun right. and I think I, as I got burnt out on contests and I dealt with like knee injuries and stuff I wasn't able to ride in the contest and hit big double ups the way I was anymore so it kind of just made me uh, kind of just redefine and that's where I kind of like uh, wanted to do more toes and waves and go hit icebergs and thankfully right. Red Bull you know has gotten behind a lot of the ideas that I've wanted to do through the years you know I figured there's there's ways that I can push the sport of wakeboarding and push myself right. uh, just by doing different stuff than other than contest riding or inventing a new trick so I just try to find bodies of water that I've will probably never never ridden and probably never ride again whether it be chopu or icebergs or you know and all kind of stuff and that kind of turned into barefooting in the last kind of like five years so it's just you know I think it's a I think it's 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 hard to do but I think if you're like genuinely passionate about it and you like stay true to yourself and you just I think if you do enough research and kind of know where the sport's going and know why it got there that's what I try to tell a lot of kids nowadays is just you know watch the old videos and learn why we did tricks the way we did them back right, then because right. if you if you don't really have a clear vision of where you're going in the future until you have and you know exactly why you went there in the past so i think uh that's what's helped me kind of like 
transition into barefooting. I just, I have like for that example, I've always, I've always been the hugest barefoot fan. Mike Seipel, Peter Fleck, Ron Scarpa, all these dudes are my heroes. So I just look, and even Keith St. Ange, I've watched like a lot of, some of the barefoot videos and it's just like the tricks they're doing are so insane, but they're just shot. The, almost the same way and edited the same way. So I was like, take what I've learned in wakeboarding and making films from the documentary right, right, right. and try to like sh make wake or barefooting, shoot it in a different way that no one's seen it and do more precision barefooting. Don't make it about the trick so much right. as about the the adventure and like the kind of like the right. risk of doing it in close quarters. And and it's just been fun. I love doing that stuff. Yeah, that, that's and that's what I was going to say. Like, like you did it in wakeboarding and then in barefooting, like, that's that's funny you say that. Like, because barefooting has never, until you've done this, I mean, barefooting's never been looked at from a cinematic point. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like you're saying, less about the the trick and more about the adventure and what you're barefooting through. Barefooting through tight little bridges yeah. underneath, you Lily know, lily pads, shallow water, exactly, like close to yeah, whatever. And I mean, yeah, like you've really you know bombing off of bridges and stuff like that, yeah. like. And I kind of learned that from my my dad. Not to some my my dad did tell me he would barefoot behind the boat through some of these can, same canals that I barefooted through, and That's awesome. some of the things he did. Like, but like my dad, uh, he, he was the first man to ever barefoot on his hands. And when it aired on the Johnny Carson show that night, he actually got a bad motorcycle wreck and oh, like pretty much like lost like almost lost his right leg. And he was like never able to like jump or like like water ski the way he was. And like that's when he transitioned into like barefooting and kind of like. Uh, flying hang gliders and stuff. Right. So my dad kind of like, I kind of learned like what, well, how that happened to him and how he kind of adapted and stuff. And, you right. know, whether it be, you know, mental or physical injuries, you know, you can always evolve. You can always step back and kind of find different pathways to the same goal. Right. Let's, let's talk about Peter B for a second, because like you said, barefooting on his hands on the Johnny Carson show. Um, I remember when I was a kid at your house watching old VHS tapes of um, your dad bombing off. Was it Philly or what? Yeah, the, Phil the Philadelphia Phillies. He would he would fly in the opening ball. For I the mean, like, standing on the edge, hang glider, bombs in, like, straight up diving, 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 boom, oh, pulls all of them, up. All of them were close calls. Like, he crashed them. I like mean, those were gnarly. And then stuck in the game. Yeah. And then he freaking lands on home plate, freaking gets up, Freaking hands the ball just off. Straight and, up. And, and the best part about that is that he was, his name was Kite Man when he did yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. And he had the whole Kite Man outfit. My dad would not change out of that all <laughs> night long. He went straight from the game right out to the bars, helmet probably on, dude, and kept the Kite Man and then, Kite Man, Kite Man. He didn't buy he didn't buy a drink all night. All night. Oh, that is amazing. <laughs> That is amazing. You you need to get a, a solid outfit that like a costume that you wear. Well, I'm, sure, I'm, sure my, I'm sure my mom has a lot in the closet. Oh, down in Lake House, uh, stashed away. I don't know if you want to see those. Uh, that is amazing. That is amazing. Yeah, my mom's get, actually getting inducted to the Hall of Fame this uh, this Saturday. So I knew that's pretty that. cool. I knew yeah, that. So. congratulations, Betty B. Yeah, mom, yeah, well, 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 well over, well. well over. I mean, she's been deserving that for. Yeah, she's super time. excited, man. It's going to be cool. Shane's made like a, we went and got a whole bunch of old video footage and we've been digitizing a bunch of the old VHS That's tapes and cool. scan, scan of photos and Shane make, made like a three minute edit for that they're going to show at the Hall of Fame thing. So it's really cool. Yeah, nice. Yeah, man. Betty's Betty psyched. Yeah, but I mean, hey, Betty, for the world, for our world of wakeboarding and especially the Pointless crew, we Pointless wouldn't have been what it was if it wasn't for Betty B. Oh, and let let it, I mean, she let us just take over the house. Our whole editing room was, I mean, at, at Betty's house. Um, the original, and I'm actually pumped we're talking about this because this kind of segues into something I, I wanted to talk about is, um, I mean, the whole floating dock and all the original pointless rails, I mean, that was all. She did just create the space to where we could just build anything, film anything, edit anything we want, and just let us have have our way with the whole house. Yeah, the whole and she was, I mean, she was always there supporting it and, and hooting and hollering and, and letting us do our thing. And so talking about that, I wanted to talk about some of those early, you know, pointless days. There's two things I want to talk about. I want to talk about early double up days over on Lake Haines. And I want to talk about some of the original pointless rails. So let's start out with double ups. And the one thing I want to talk about is, 
I feel like I remember watching you from in the boat, and you know, everyone else at the end of their pass would, you know, hit a double up and, or turn around and, and hit dubs and whatever. And there was a point when your riding completely changed from being a wakeboarder to your your vision of actually looking at water was so different because you started like doing all this transitional stuff like you would find all these little nooks and crannies to land in to take out of land in something instantly take out of it and like wakeboarding was never no one looked at wakeboarding like that until then and you started doing that and i, re I remember you doing a right double up and doing a double cabbie and then freaking right out of it asking for a left right into that into a double roll the revert and stuff like that and like triple up whips and just finding every transition that you could hit and do something and land in a transition. I feel like that changed, really changed the way people looked at wakeboarding after that because it was like, oh, wow, like everything doesn't have to be landing hard into the flats or how you take off of something, I mean. Yeah, you can shrink it down and kind of just look at it different. And that's one of the, I mean, I grew up water skiing and water skiing was made to you go down, you go back, you do the same set, set of buoys, you do the same you right. know, the same jumps of wakeboarding just felt so refreshing to me. And then that was like, and when, once I learned about double ups and stuff and like, that's when I really realized how much you can like, cause I love double ups from the start, watching Gator and all these guys and hitting it. And I've, I've always been in love with the double up, but from there I, yeah, I kind of just looked at the way that you can manipulate water and turn and kind of create triple ups and and do re-entries and yeah, yeah triple re entries up, yeah triple up whips were like really fun to do like back in the day and that's pretty much where you like take the boat and just kink it and then when i say kink it the waves kind of like triple up and they mold up they bolt bolt up right there and you do a high speed whip do you need and back this back in the day when we had no weight really in the boat so you could get like a a 40 50 mile an hour whip going down and you're letting go of the rope so it feels like you're almost snowboarding and you come in you have to navigate your way into these triple ups and you just go up and you, sometimes you'd hit it going yeah. 40 I mean, 40 mile an hour you'd fly like 100 feet do like back 780 or right. double flips or you were just airing doubles just, off of those i remember and the cool thing about it is like the way you would get into it is like you would haul ass kind of turn around one kind of hop over it ride down the back of one and into the deep and like it's an art form of getting <laughs> yeah it. I mean, exactly I mean, and the faster you go the harder it is to get into it so you have to like you're coming at it you have to let go and you have to draw your right line and de-weight a little bit and then and it happens fast first time i ever really hurt my knee was actually doing triple up whips like that it was super glassy and i was coming in like 40 50 miles an hour and then as i come at it it was so glassy i just lost all 3D depth perception of where it was. And I was just, it just turned into a, like a blur almost. And I slowly started straightening my legs. And as soon as I straightened my knee, boom, I hit Oof. it. And just, just wrecked me. But yeah, but those are, those are fun. I've always loved uh, still doing that kind of right. stuff too. Yeah, I feel, I feel like that was like kind of a, a game changer of the way people looked at the way you could ride a wakeboard and the way you looked at water yeah you know what i mean and, but that's just me wanting to have fun too that's what that like as as i would get kind of slightly not bored with it but i'm just always trying to make myself smile so if i and, and, and we've done some sometimes it works out sometimes it doesn't work out but you never know till you go and you never know till you go you never know till you go okay all right let's let's move on and in, in the same era that we're talking about the double ups is some of the first really gnarly big rails um and obviously one of my favorites that i think really changed kind of the way people looked at hitting rails was the big uh you know the big three green pipes yeah. with the metal rails to the long pipes right. and when you started doing 450s and like i mean you were the first person really that was hitting huge gaps into transitions and like doing handle passes and handle and passes, kind of, yeah, yeah and over. Things. I mean, I feel like when that dropped, no one ever saw anything like that. And then all of a sudden, that just completely changed the whole game of hitting rails is a real part of wakeboarding, and it opened up the doors for all these different people to, you know, incorporate building rails and riding rails into, you know, real wakeboarding. Right. Yeah, that was a magical time of like just. What was that? What was it? Was Mark Bain? What, I mean, we filmed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Played, but what, was that Faction or Free for All or I think it was Faction. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, that was a that was a crazy crazy rail. And the, I mean, and and props to all the, the you kids nowadays because 
Uh, y'all build rails a hell of a lot better than we did. I, mean, I, was, I was talking to Chad. Ours was just a bunch of stolen stuff from <laughs> yeah, going around yeah, Lake yeah, Alfred yeah, and cutting, cutting yeah, rails going down. And, and... Going to the dump, trying to find like a <laughs> bent rail or something, a couple cinder blocks, some duct tape, a couple screws. Uh, maybe hijack a couple uh, picnic tables from the elementary school, and we're in business. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was a, yeah, that was a really, uh, yeah, that rail in particular kind of like changed the way, like, because we were hitting kind of like some fun, bo- like some of the 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 pyramids and stuff, like on on tour and stuff. Well, uh, this was before. Was that right? Yeah, because that was pretty much after that. Is like when they started only rainbow and rails. That's, at that th- that's what I'm saying. Is like yeah. that hitting transitions on rails is kind of. Change the game, yeah. Because then people started going like the tours and play, building fun boxes right, and stuff yeah. like that. But before that right you did cables, that, yeah, and then ca- all the cables were right. pretty much stocked with rails and stuff. But at, at that time, like OWC just yeah, opened OWC up, and there's like a flat 99. bar and a kicker. Yeah, you know what I mean. They were built in '99, and yeah. there was yeah, it was just that incline and that no flat top. Yeah, come a long way, man. I was just. I was telling Paul the other day how I'd go down to Ski Ricks and just do laps around that cable for like hours. At like twelve years old, not one kicker, not one rail on the whole thing, and I couldn't do, couldn't even do a railing. I like, couldn't do a flip or anything. Just, just ripping laps. I thought it was so cool that you didn't hear the boat. Like right. the first time you hopped on and not because I was it's just I'm, silent. I'm, I'm, no, from no the time I was a baby, I've always, when I, if you're skiing, you hear, you hear the noise engine, and so it's just been part of it. So the one of the first time I remember riding cable, hopping off the dock, and actually hearing what you, the noise your wakeboard makes. So it was fascinating. So. Yeah. Yeah, de- and definitely that no no wake and just hearing the water. No, that's what it's about, man. Man, I ate so much shit trying to learn railies down there. Did you? Was that before you were doing railies behind the boat? Yeah, I learned them on the on the cable first. Shannon Best was down there. Oh, really? That's cool. I probably caught like thirty toe edges all day. <laughs> And that's 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 actually something something we could talk about that doesn't really exist anymore. I mean, obviously it started down at Rickson, the Indian line. Yeah. I mean, I remember those early OWC like expo parties when there was those Indian line contests and you had the yellow gloves on. Yep, the Trex brick handle. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, and put on the yellow in, inner inner line gloves and And you're that Thursday night, yeah. Boosting. Yeah, that was crazy. The lights are on out there and you're just coming into this tower. With, and you couldn't really see anything because it was so blinding, and they were like, "Be like two or three thousand people on shore." And and that that those are like and the Jeff moments. Jeff here yelling at me uh, on the dock. Uh, exactly. <laughs> God harder. Oh, God. <laughs> that wasn't about. I miss Expo, man. I, I hope the whole industry gets behind Expo again because yeah. I feel like it's just it's much needed. And and those parties are alone, and that whole experience was like so many people like what you just said come up to me. And like seriously, they're like grown adults. They're like, man, I went, I was at OWC that one night, like Thursday night, and he, he goes, I was ten years old sitting on the shore. It's really cool. The, those those nighttime Indian rope expo parties were insane. Yeah, they. they and were that's cool. that's what really started. I think like those types of, you know, you doing that in front of the. I mean, that's when like rock stardom started setting in <laughs> for you for yeah, for different. for wakeboarding. I mean, like. It was just such a, a change of what wakeboarding was to a whole new era of of taking wakeboarding to a whole new yeah, level. Yeah, it was right as wakeboarding really started to get some solid traction and right. stuff. And after X Games and all that stuff. Yeah. Fun ride. Yeah, it was cool. Crazy to think how, big, how, how much the sport's changed since, since we were doing it as teenagers, you know? Yeah, 100%. Um, Something else I want to talk about is, um, you know, with Red Bull <laughs> talking about opportunities, you know, um, one thing I've been lucky to be a part of is all, we're talking about, you know, opening up uh, different ways of looking at wakeboarding and things that you've done and how you're talking about barefooting, bringing it to new locations, different bodies of water is all the, the Red Bull, uh, the boat, you know, the river trips, the... Yeah. Uh, those river trips are, yeah, I think, I think I, the exploration side of wakeboarding is, and that's what I've realized with, with bears and, you know, and doing those kind of trips is, you know, cause I've grown, I've always lived on a lake and I've always ridden the same body of water and that's just, uh, you know, that's all, all I've known. So when we started to, and I've grown up in Florida all my life and I've seen parts of Florida that I never got to like see. 
And so, I mean, if you if you have a chance, I think it, it takes a little bit of research, right. figure out where you can gas up, how to get the trailer down there. Maybe a, someone drives a car back and double it back or something, but and figure out where you're going to stay. But you can really try to use a lot of these bodies of water. Take your wakeboard boat that you have at home and like get out on a, a different body of water next to your house and go go exploring, man, and just get off the beat path because seriously the real fun starts right outside of your comfort zone and sometimes right. sometimes they go good sometimes they're you know it's the variables that you got to deal with with weather or whatever it may be you know but that's part that's why you do those kind of things and what makes those fun because right. you never know what you're going to get and it's cool honestly just never turning back and it never, crazy like only you go just, in one direction you, you, you see the small things on the horizon they get bigger and then they leave and they get smaller behind you and you never look back Right. You fall, you pick up the rider, and you just keep on going. It's really a, a refreshing way to like see uh, the country. Yeah, I mean, I have to say that <clears throat> it's really a a true form of of pure advent, like old school American adventure, like going out not knowing what you know what lies ahead of you, and yeah. um, and just seeing what happens and <coughs> being able to document those has been so fun because i mean you never know what's going to happen next and you never know where you're going to go next the people you see yeah i mean you come across some characters man. there is some characters remember i popped my guitar string and we ended up oh this was this that, i think this was on the first one. that was, was that was Toby. yeah yeah i popped the guitar string uh coming and then we meet this dude on a random broke down looking fishing boat just been living there for like three years and i go he, and he had an e-string in there and he like Gives me one string for my guitar, pops it on there, and we have a little jam. Yeah. But yeah, you never know what you're going to get on those, and that's that's the beauty of it, man. That is the beauty of it. And that's <laughs> it's cool to uh, have had. And we've, we've basically covered from, I mean, I guess it would be like more or less central Florida down every single waterway, almost possible. Yeah, St. John's down, intercoastal, off, yeah. East coast, west coast, through the middle, St. John's. Yeah. Unzip Florida's dress, that old Danny Hampson would say. <laughs> <laughs> That's classic. That's classic. Um, Hope you do more of those. Yeah, definitely. But I encourage other people to get out there and give her a go, man. It's get your get your favorite crew and couple boats and that's a, that's a cool the boats thing. are capable of it now and a lot my my xr has gps in there like we're literally it shows the channel markers it tells you how deep it is like it's it's it made it the boats come a long way from where it started right 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 and the, the crazy the cool thing about that is like the group of people you're on that trip with like you're in it with them. You're you're in it with them. And yeah. the the cool thing about it is generally, I mean, we always have a crew of I always say, say to people that like, ask me about it, it's like you have a you need a crew that you can depend. Everyone kind of has what they're really good at or what they're in charge of or whatever and everyone just completely depends that they're doing what they yeah. need to do. You know what yeah, I mean? That's well said. And like you need you need that reliability on a trip like that. Yeah. There's a lot of moving parts. A hundred percent. But uh, yeah, peeps, let's talk about um, let's talk about the evolution of uh, boards that you have ridden, and the, a, a cool, really, I think, you've seen more of a, a you know evolved with different style of riding uh, boards that have evolved for what you need, what you want, and for you know you've been riding a wakeboard for your whole entire life. So obviously what you were riding when you were younger, you know, there's more technology and boards have changed. But also now riding a board that, you know, is more designed to keep you riding longer and, to, you know, l a little less intensity and a little bit more fun on the water. So Yeah, I mean, I th yeah, fortunately I've been, I'm old enough to where I got into the sport to where it was very young. So I've got to watch the evolution of uh, wakeboard, not just wakeboards, but boats, because I feel, I feel like the wake itself, in a way, changed the way wakeboards were designed. Right. Uh, in the beginning, when we didn't have the skyline or like towers or anything, our rope was really, it was down really low, and the wakes were really, really small. So if you look at those boards, even Darren's uh, directional board, and then even my Conley that I rode, and the T2, and a lot of those boards, a lot of boards were just super narrow. Right. They're not made, they didn't have a lot of surface area because they were made to really edge and, and build that line because that's how you had to do 
uh, tricks at the time. There weren't a really trip tricks, uh, which like scarecrows and tantrums. Th- those weren't super popular at the time. The right. way to do tricks were like really edge generated rolls. That's where like a, a heel mope is kind of like the first mope that was ever done. And roll to reverts and air rolls were really popular because these boards are made to, for just just to be daggers in the water. So that's right. that's why my board even. The board I shaped with Conley into free motion, those boards are very similar, and that's the and it suited my riding style, you know. So I think the wakes determine the the, the wakeboard shapes, but also like riding style can also right. determine it. So between those two, I, that's why I like the little board. And then the boats change, you know. Um, as the wakes got a little bit bigger, the tantrums and the scarecrows started to become more of a popular trick. Tricks. Tricks change as evolved, the you know? as the wakes got bigger. It changed the way you fundamentally can ride. A hundred percent. Right. So that's why we went. We said, okay, we don't need narrow, continuous rocker boards anymore. We need we need wider three stage rocker boards. You know. So when I first started with Paul Simon with Hyperlight back in the day, we were trying to figure out which board I was going to ride because I was going through an evolution myself. You I remember know? you when you first started, you were riding that blue barley board for a while. Right. When Paul, we we did a boot first. We had the Parks boot come out. And and before this, I've never seen anyone ride my wakeboard. Like I had like three pro models. Right. And I haven't seen any random kid or anyone ever bring the board up to me and have me sign it or anything. Like it was just really, I wasn't super marketable at the time, but Paul released like a really sick boot. And then he told me, he was like, really figure out what board you want and what kind of style board you want. So I rode the Byerly, I rode the Project, the Drifter, the Premier. Right. I rode an old badass board. I rode a label board. I, I, I really wanted to figure out what. Uh, I, I remember when you were riding that badass. That, that was, I really liked that, that orange yeah. painted. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was a really crazy cool board. But I learned a lot during that. And that was a 2001 season on tour. And even on tour, I was changing boards. I rode right. the Byerly, I rode the Premier. So I, I really figured out what kind of board I wanted and I knew and I wanted a, a three stage rocker wide board because that's what and I wanted it to have really hard edges and big fins because I still like to edge really hard, but the wakes were getting a big enough and they're steep, so you needed that kind of that three stage rocker kind of face to kind of kick off the wake. And that's kind of like the, the direction of where my boards went through like the two thousands and that went into the Ibex with Ronix and even the the next spawn of that is even uh, when we went to Camber because Camber is actually it's a three stage rocker but it's even it goes back the other way so what you, it was probably a little slow on the water but that thing when it hit the face of a wake it popped like straight up yeah Shota used to boot on that thing shoot it, yeah Shota would boost on that thing so that's kind of like and maybe we went too far like in the in the three stage rocker direction and really I think I feel like that camera would, would, would have been better if the wakes didn't change because really as soon as we released that board that was right as like but, that was right as the then, G came out and like exactly. you know and then the, you know X-Star just had like a new so the wakes were scaled up and now they're like bigger than this table so the transition right. really is what changed why I have the board nowadays compared to like the board I was right. riding uh, three stage rocker from Camber even the Ibex and stuff because the, trans- the the wakes are so big and the transitions are so big you don't need that hard kickback pop anymore it's more important to have a board carry its speed you can you can come build your speed in the, at the bottom and you want your board to come up and just right. maintain the speed and off have that top water speed, and have yeah. that top water speed and yeah. like that's more is more important because now i mean the wakes are wider they're the the trajectory makes you go up you really have to carry a lot of speed uh and i think just having a continuous rocker board right. and the most fast riding board on the surface and that's why you know i think from having the speed walls to t-box technology i wanted everything about this board from the width than the nose and tail to have as much glide speed on the water, which makes it just, I mean, me at 41 years old, it just makes it easier on my arms and the board just releases clean, sits really high on the water and it's just functionally like really, I mean, I dig it. Right, for sure. And you know, the the funny thing, like what you're talking about, like how back in the day boards were built for edging, right? And then we went three stage, and, and it, built for popping. And 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 now, like how we were saying, the the size of the wakes and and all that, like pretty much like fundamentally changed the way you rode a wakeboard. Now, when you like watch, like Mossies and Ties edge, I mean, they're edging and carrying speed, but they're like they're very rarely edging through. They're carrying and riding through the top of the wake, but it's not like before where you're edging 
through yeah, and yeah. away from. Right. You know what I mean? Like how you brought up a back mob, like a back mob, a Rayleigh, like any of those like quintessential original fundamental style tricks is like that's just like not even Yeah, that you don't see that edge too often unless you're flicking like a maybe a, a double flip or something. Right, or maybe right. like maybe some some hill tens, you maybe see that kind of like snappy kind of aggressive load line kind of like right. thing, but I, I mean it's it's crazy. And I'm, it's honestly, it makes me smile watching like Mossy and Ty. Those dudes just like, and Nick, how big Nick goes. Like, it's just so refreshing to watch. Like, see how far the sports just really come. Because <laughs> yeah. I just watch them. I go, damn, these kids are so damn good, man. Yeah. It's it's impressive to watch, and it really is makes it gratifying and makes all the ACLs worth it, man. <laughs> You, 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 your ACLs have paved the way. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, these knees. Well, right I, 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 this one's a, de- a couple dead man a- ACL, so I don't know the name of the dead man of yeah. the cadaver that gave me this, but exactly. <laughs> yep, those knees paved the way right there. Yeah, man. But yeah, in general, I just wanted a board that's like just fun to ride, man. Because like, like I was said this almost this this whole thing, it's it's about having fun, man. That's why we started doing this. And if even for one second, if you're not having fun, you will slowly not want to do it anymore. Yeah. So, I mean, if you want to stay on the water, remember why you, you started it, man. Right. Because we all, from the earliest age, are just looking down. I remember being on a kneeboard or just skis and just touching the bubbles, just going past right. you. And I watch kids get up on the kneeboard or, or wake, and they just look down and see the water. And it's that sensation is like what it's all about. Sometimes it's not about... Proven as you get older, proving to yourself that you can do these old tricks or uh, do this old run or right. impress this person or press yourself. Just go out there, drop your guard, have some fun, look down, touch the water, look at your the reflection in the look at your eyes, and uh, man, it's you'll remember why you did it because once you stop having fun, you stop wakeboarding. That that is a hundred percent facts. That is a hundred percent facts for sure. Um, yeah, that's awesome, peeps. Um, one more thing I want to ask you about is more or less, uh, not ask, but I want to (laughs) hear your favorite all time tour pointless, just a good one, a solid party story, a solid party story, hopefully involving maybe Chad Chuck or something like that. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man, well, how do I? How do we, where do we? Where do we go on this one? It could be anything. It could be anything. Um, it's it's a it's a broad question. It's a, I broad know, a very question. broad question. I remember I remember one I remember one pointless story is when uh, you remember the the Ollie contest. At oh yeah. The, at the at, was it the carnival? It was a project. It was that project. It wasn't the carnival. It was, it was a, a straight Ollie contest. Yeah, I, Alliance Ollie it, contest. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, and so we're all out there and we're all like chasing. We're all putting everyone's putting money on who's going to go and everyone's getting ready and they have this bar out there. And there, and the what's on the line is a cooler full of like beer, not yeah. just like a little igloo. This thing no, was like, the big six footer, and there was no ice in this thing, and it was stocked to the top. It was beer, yeah. And we were ready to drink some beer, yeah. and everybody wanted to win this <laughs> thing, dude. Chad, Ruck, all of us, and we're out there all in, the whole pointless crew. We, man, we're all in, all in, all in, and you know who wins this motherfucker? Brian Grubb, the no, wake skater, right. dude. He, that's he, right. Grubb never hasn't probably strapped on a wakeboard in like three or four years and goes and just boom, all these over the fucking thing that no one could get over and took that. Uh, wasn't it? Yeah, he took it over to Colin. I think Colin Wright almost uh, beat him or something. Possibly, possibly. But do you remember, I can't remember. Yeah, do you it remember was like, Colin like Grubb Wright? took it home and we loaded that thing up. And, and we, we went, went back, back to Lake Alfred. We went back to Lake Alfred. Yeah. The whole crew, all eight of yeah. those nine of us, and we went back there and tore that thing up, dude. <laughs> Once uh, the beer got warm. Yeah. Coke 45. Man, that's a good... You see, you know, you're saying that. I have a good memory. That's a good memory right there. <laughs> that's a good memory. Man, well... Hopefully my memory gets as good as yours one day. No, no, I think that's, that's good. Well, peeps, um, what the really to to end her off? I mean, you have done, and you know, your your whole legacy and what you've done has been your entire life. I mean, you've changed the game in so many ways. You've inspired so many people, so many facets of the sport, and inspired the fact that you can be a certain. You can, you know, have a certain image of of what you are, but it can always change 
with with your lifestyle and the way you live and the fact that you've been true to yourself of who you are it's very apparent that you are always having fun and what you do is so organic and um what what is uh well, thank you for those kind words man that's that's I'm getting choked up when you're saying that, man. No, yeah, well, it brings no, it brings it. Yeah, it brings back crazy, yeah, crazy memories, man. And yeah, it's just never put a ceiling on yourself, man. You can always, you're never, never stuck going down the same path. You can, everyone can always step back and see things from afar and kind of reevaluate anything. And hell, man, anything's possible. You can just have fun, keep smiling, and remember why we all started doing it, man. Reach down fun and touch first. the water. Reach down, touch the water. That's what it's about. Cheers, babes. Cheers, dude.